Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the Business Professional Association's third Thursday uh, engagement uh, panel, although the panel is going to be a little different tonight, so we're glad that you all have decided to join us, certainly on behalf of uh, Bishop David Evans, Pastor Nick, Nicholas Smith, uh, the BPA leadership team, which is uh, Jane Ellen Miller, uh, Deborah Dickerson and Luanda Cones, we thank you for joining joining us this evening. Uh, this evening, we're going to be talking about how to create a business plan. Uh, we've been working through um, a lot of information uh, on how to present a good format for those of you that are in business, whether you're in business for yourself, whether you're working for a corporation and wanting to know what to do uh, to get the business plan in place. You could be just starting a business. You could already have a business. You could be thinking about a business. You could be in a corporate environment and it'd be good for you to understand the basis of creating a business plan. We want to give you some of those tools tonight. Um, the What we've put together for you for the next four months, including this tonight, is kind of a step-by-step -step fundamental way of how to create and be engaged in a business. So tonight, um, the next month, we're going to talk about the legal aspects of business, whether that's an LLC or incorporation, registration and regulation, um, depending on what kind of business you have, licensing. Um, and then in March, we're going to look at funding and finance, and we have some exciting things uh, there for you then. And then in April, we're going to talk about technology and social media. So we have all these platforms over the next four months that are going to provide you with some fundamental aspects of driving your business, whether you're, again, starting a business, thinking about a business, already in business, um, and just need some, some, some tools, or if you're in the corporate world and you wanna be able to get a closer connection to some of these things because they may be outside of what you do today. So we're, we're very excited uh, to have you here tonight. We're working through how to provide you with all of this detail, and we're, we haven't gotten that yet um, on how to make sure that it's available to you post the um, the discussions, but please um, please take the time to share. If you know somebody that's in business, if you know somebody that's thinking about being in business, um, please let them know, hey, Bethany is out there. We're doing a lot of stuff here at Bethany for y'all. We love y'all, miss y'all. Can't wait to be in touch with you, but please share um, that we're on all the social media platforms. I'm not the technology guy. They call me a picnic problem in chair, not in computer, but we are on all the social media platforms and would ask that you share this may be able to help somebody with some of the things that they're doing. So we thank you, uh, welcome, and we're gonna get right into it and start to go through the presentation. We're gonna be looking at the questions that you have while we go through it and looking forward to what it is um, we can do to help you. So creating a business plan, very fundamental things to create a business plan, but a lot to it. We don't want you to be um, overwhelmed with the information that I'll be providing you tonight. Uh, please get a pen and a, and a piece of paper Take notes. Again, we have your comments, so we'll look to we'll look to see what comments you have and try to answer that. I'll, I'll pause at times. If you see me looking down to the left, it's because that's where all the comments are and the presentations are here in front of me. So please um, take copious notes and and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, Amen. So for the agenda tonight, we're going to look at a, a couple of th different things. We're going to go through these eight topics. Um, why why a business plan, right? Um, within the business plan. So we'll just start with the fundamental, why do I need a business plan? And then we'll go on through, we'll go through seven key areas of that business plan in and of itself. The first thing will be the executive summary, uh, company description, market and competitive analysis, very important. Management and operations, also very important. Marketing and sales. And there's various definitions for marketing, which we'll go over tonight. Financials, which a lot of people shy away from, but it's, it's not much different than your monthly budget that you work on. And then a summary. Uh, so that's those are the segments we'll go through. And as we go through each one, I will take the time to um, to look at some of the comments and see if we can answer some of your questions. All right. So why do I need a business plan? Why do I need a business plan? Well, you know, um, some people are just, you know, good at driving businesses and good at doing things. But it's fundamental to you in your business to have an understanding of what you're expecting, what you're really expecting to come out of your business over a certain time period. For some people, it's one to three years. For some people, it's one to five years. For some, some people, it's 
it's already established and they need to understand where they're going to go in the next three to five years. But it certainly provides you a guide, uh, a roadmap um, of what you can expect for the next three to five years. It also can be used when you're looking to obtain funds from banks or investors. So if I, if I have started a business and my business is going and I'm doing all right and I need to go to a bank or investor, and they say, well, okay, show me what you have. If I then have to go back and create that, that may let them know or alert them that I don't have um, some of the basics of being a business owner or being in business. Um, or if I'm in a corporation and, and my, my manager says, Just tell me about your business, you know, it's, it's, it, you need to have that kind of information available. So number one, it provides a roadmap. Number two, it can help you when you're looking to um, generate funds from banks or investors. And it allows for all relevant information about your business to reside in one place. So you can go to it. You can go to it. And we'll talk a little bit more about, is this a static document or a live document? Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But as, as you heard Pastor Nick say last night at the end of Bible study in Habakkuk 2, 2, it says, write the vision and make it plain. When it's written down, you have something to go to. You have something to go back to. Um, I'm a visual person, so I like to write things, right? I like to, That's why you see the chalkboard behind me. I like to write things. But you need to have a business plan. Whether you're thinking about it, whether you're in business, just starting, whether you've been in business and never had a plan, or whether, again, you're working in a corporate environment and you're working in a certain area of business that you need a business plan based on what we're going to talk about this evening. OK. All right. Any questions on that one, too? Not not yet. Just yet. But please don't don't forget. Post the comments because we do want this as interactive as possible as we feed you this is this information. Now, let's get into it. Business plans may vary. They may vary whether you're a startup business or an existing business. So if you're a startup business, um, you're, you're thinking about a business or you're, you're, you just started up. You need to think about what is this business opportunity? You know, why will I be successful in this in this in this business venture that I'm going into? What is the model for the business? What what is the things that are going to shape how this business is going to be structured? What is the target market? You know, are you targeting a certain segment of the population, a certain culture, or a certain dynamic or demographic, a certain region? You know, where is the market? What about the competition? Who's already there? Is there anybody there? Are you the first to the table? Are you a you know are you a, are you a first mover, so to speak, as we say, or are you entering to something that has already been established? What is my marketing and sales strategy? And I'll pause there and, and talk about marketing just a minute. You know, marketing can be looked at from a couple of different places, right? There's one side of marketing where it's what are the trends in the business? What's going on in the business? What is it? You know, what is it doing? And then there's the other side of how do you present yourself in the place where you're going to have your business? So we'll get into that a little bit more later. What's your operational plan? How are you going to generate your product or service? Could be a product, could be a service. Who's involved in the business? Who's involved? And what is the financial analysis that you have over what you are expecting to do? That seems like a lot for a startup business, but you start writing those things down and it starts to flow. And then you see where you have solid information and where are those areas where you need to, to generate additional information so you have a solid, a solid uh, business plan. If you're existing business, you want to have a mission, a mission statement, which we'll talk about um, a little later, a brief description of your company, some of the major milestones that you've been able to um, uh, achieve um, in the history of, of, the, of the company being, being in place, what is the finances, right? What it give a finances of whether it's been a month, uh, well, not a month, but whether it's been a year, or a couple of years, what have been your, the financial look of your company and what's your future look like? What are you expecting to do going forward? So that those plans were varied. And, and certainly the information that we're presenting to you this evening is not an end all be all. There could be some other aspects that you may not wanna, wanna have in your plan or that you may wanna add to your plan or take some things from the right and put it on the left, or take some things from the left and put it on the right. But these are some of the foundational things that you wanna do um, when you're putting together uh, your business plan, all right? Um, I see a question here. Do, uh, do you have, uh, is there a grant that can assist in starting up business? That's going to be when we get to finance and funding. So stay tuned, so that's not tonight. That's a good question. That's gonna be when we get to finance and funding, all right? Amen. Let's keep going. So 
If you recall, I said, you have to have an executive summary. That goes into the front of your plan. It's done at the end of writing the plan, but it still goes near the front of, at the front of your plan. This is a brief summary or overview uh, that shows what the business is about and captures who's ever reading its attention. This is something that, that you want folks that they can get a, a, a kind of understanding. We call it um, in corporate America, the elevator speech. You know, it's no longer than a page. It's something that if you were to get into an elevator, right, go from the top to the, from the bottom to the top, that you could explain what your business is before those doors open. And that, that's very important also, because most of the folks that you're gonna be looking to for funding or investing, they probably don't have a lot of time. So you're gonna wanna be able to concisely talk about what your business is. So it, 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 it should provide a preview to investors or CEOs or bankers of what it is that you're doing. It should include some simple things like the name, location, and, and, and what it is uh, your company has offered. So that's the executive summary. Again, that's written last, but it goes up front. Written last, but it goes up front. So once you finish the entire business plan, you'll be able to go to the executive summary and understand and, 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 and begin to write the executive summary because you have all the other information, right? You already have the information, okay? So what we'd like to do now is give you uh, a couple examples, just a couple examples of what a, an executive summary looks like, okay? So here's a, here's a first example. And this is, this is just an example for a startup. It's a product, so you start off with your product description or objective, your product or service. Again, this could be a service, it might not be a product, it may be a service that you're offering. But you give a description of it and tell the audience or those who will be reading your business plan what your company is all about. You also let them know, you also want to have in this executive summary what the product is and what is it intended for. The product again or service, what is it? And what is it intended use uh, or what, intended service does it actually provide? And then you want to take a quick look. Uh, it doesn't have to be real heavy on how you expect your business to perform in the upcoming year. You know, here's my business. This is what I expect to do. Some of you have watched um, um, Shark Tank. Um, so I like the show myself. Shark Tank, where they say, okay, what did you do? How did you do it? Why should we invest in you? Why should we give you some money? All those folks, before they go on that show, they have to have, excuse me, a pretty solid business plan so that they are able to clearly articulate what it is they're doing. And then you want to talk about, you want to be transparent in your plans. You want to kind of talk about what some of the risk or some of the opportunities are that your company might encounter. Um, you know, you don't have to tell everything, but you kind of want to be somewhat transparent in what it is that may happen or what it is that may not happen as you begin to go through uh, what's going to be included in your business. And then your conclusions, you know, what are uh, the list of recommendations that you have? What are the suggestions um, based on the results presented, you know, in the report of all the stuff that you gave, you gave above, and that's going to be then coming forward in the rest of the document. So this is just one example for a startup. Another, another question I see here, is, is, is there grants that can assist in starting up a business? Yes, there are. But again, that will come in our finance and funding section um, and not necessarily tonight. Um, similar to an LLC, that's gonna come into the, into the legal aspects of running your own business, whether it's LLCs, incorporations, licensings, registrations, regulatory, those type of things will come in our, our, um, the legal aspects of, of running your business at a later time. Um, can you have a nonprofit and still make money? <laughs> yeah, you look at, a, there's a lot of 5013Cs out there that are nonprofit and make, and make money. My wife and I had one. It was a foundation that raised money for, for childhood cancers. It was a 5013C. We donated a lot of money to local hospitals. Um, and, and that was, that was a, a, a nonprofit that made money. There were bigger nonprofits. Ours didn't have a staff between, except for her and I. But there are bigger nonprofits which have to have staff. And so when they have staff, you have to pay it. You know, so um, there are nonprofits that make money uh, and that can make money. So that that's a that's a good question. Um, should someone include the need for the product or service in the target market in the summary? Yes. Yes, you should. And we'll talk a little bit more about that 
as as we go along. So this is an example first of just an executive summary for a startup company. Now this next one I'm gonna show you gets a little bit more in depth. And 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 forgive me if, if I go a little bit too corporate on you, but I I I've been managing multinational business for a while. And when I put together executive summary, I'm going to do a, a couple of things. So this is just one of the businesses that I used to manage. And this is based on um I'm a uh, chemistry, right? So I, I was running a business where chemi chemicals um, and and products were derived from from pine trees. It's a very sustainable sustainable uh, raw material, and these these um, chemicals that were derived from that in this business description that you see at the top went into different things. Um, forget about the 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 names. The first one is just a, a basic rosin or resin. You know, sap comes out of a, a pine tree that goes into inks goes in adhesives, goes in the paper, goes in the rubber. Uh, the next thing was a, a acid that came off that, that goes in the coatings, minings, and then something else that came off the paper mill, which was called lignin, but don't worry about that. We're just looking at the formatting here. That goes into these other segments, as you can see here. And then last, another product that came off that goes into um, pharmaceuticals and renewable area, renewable energy. So when I'm sitting in front of a, a board of directors or, or, or some Wall Street analysts, this says, okay, this is the description of the business that, that Rich is describing. And then you move over to the right and says, okay, as I said earlier, for existing businesses, if you've been in business for a while, you can talk about, you know, what have been your historical financials. Certainly I blacked things out on this because I had to, but you know, this is okay. What were the, the sales and revenue uh, in a certain year uh, on, the, on the bars and what was the profitability, um, particularly if you're looking to gain funding or what have you. Um, and then in the bottom left hand corner, we're just talking about where are all the products, how much of the market do they make up? So if you have a diverse portfolio of products, if you're into um, clothing, right, and you do belts and ties and, and, and sweaters and dresses and bags, that could be that lower left quadrant, right? So X percent go to the shoes, X percent go to the bags, X percent go to the ties, X percent go to the handkerchiefs or, or what have you kind of segment what your business is. And then if you're, if you're regional um, and if you, this, this is, this is depicting a global nature of business, but let's say you're working in a tri-state area, right? So you say this percent of my business is in New Jersey, this percent of my business is in uh, Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, this percent of my business is in, is in um, Delaware, or if you're just in Jersey, this percent of my business in North Jersey, Central Jersey, or South Jersey, or this percent of my business is in Marlton, Linden Wall, you get the gist of what I'm saying, but kind of really outlining what it is your business is doing. Then you can put a little section there that shows who are your customers, you know, how many customers do you have, who are the key ones, and then of course we talked about competition uh, a little earlier. So that is, those are two. So again, we have a simple one, that when you're this, you know, starting a startup company, you can say, you know, these are, or, or your company is not that big, or you don't want to have all the detail that on the next slide. This is what our description is. This is the audience that we that we we go after. This is what our outlook is for our business. These are the risks and opportunities we have, and these are the conclusions, or something a lot more in depth. Whether you're an entrepreneur um, in business for yourself and have been in there for a while, or um, you know, working in the in the corporate area. Of, of what what it is um, and how to summarize the business. So we've talked about you know why we need a business plan, right? And then we went to the executive executive summary, which is at the end. I mean, which is done at the end of making the business plan, but will be at the beginning of the of the plan. Let me let me pause and see if there's if there's any questions. Um, no. Um, not not yet. Just some some repetitive ones, but but please keep keep um keep sending them up and keep sharing them. So once you have the executive summary, what do you do? You move into the business overview. This is an overview of your company overall, right? And so in this in this overview, you can have um, a mission statement and a vision. You can have your product and or services, and you also have an outlook. So. What are we here to do? What is our long-term expectation of what we wanna do? What is it that we're offering? And what is it the outlook for the business? Again, think of this as something that if somebody came to understand your business, 
that you can hand them this document and they could read it in such a way that they wouldn't have to ask you any questions. Right. So it doesn't have to be, you know, too deep. You know, as Bishop always says, if you get too deep, then you get dumb. It doesn't have to be deep. You want to have a document that will clearly articulate what it is you're doing so that if you hand it to me and I have to go, I can read through it. Certainly, I may, you know, scribble some questions on it, but it gives me a good understanding of what it is you're trying to do. So mission, statement and vision. Let's go through some definitional definitions so you can write this stuff down again. A mission statement is simply a brief description of an entity's fundamental purpose, answering why does this business exist? Why does this business exist? And I give you an example here. An example is simply Uber. Uber is we ignite opportunity by setting the world in motion. Pretty simple, right? Pretty basic. Uber, what is it? Everybody knows what Uber is. Uber is a is a transportation vehicle that that allows you to you know use your use your mobile phone and say I need to go such and such a place and the car comes by and picks you up takes you where you want to go. So their mission statement is simply we ignite opportunity by setting the world in motion. Pretty clear, pretty distinct, right? So again, a brief description of an entity's fundamental purpose answering why does my business exist? And then you go from there to what is going to be your vision statement. And the vision statement is simply a description of what the company desires to achieve in the long run. A vision statement is simply a statement that describes what the company desires to achieve in the long run. And the example here we have is Facebook. Facebook, connect with friends, and the world around you on Facebook. Connect with, I'm not on Facebook, uh, but <laughs> connect with friends and the world around you on Facebook. How many people has Facebook connected with? Um, have, how many friends has Facebook allowed to connect with people with each other, right? So whether it's friends, whether it's acquaintances, people have met each other, people have, 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 have been able to generate leads for their businesses, um, people have been given the opportunity to do something simple as engage um, through this vehicle called Facebook. And that's what their vision statement was. And based on Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg and what he's been able to do, I think you can say he's been successful. And Uber is, is being pretty successful too, right? They're, they're coming around. They just did the IPO last, last year uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an initial public offering. So they went, they, they became a company, went on Wall Street last year. So vision statement, mission statement. It sometimes can take a while to do those and you want to get the right words, you know, words matter. So you take the time to not just jot something down. Some people are very good with that. It doesn't, it, it's okay to, 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 if you write a vision statement or a mission statement, to ask some other folks what their opinions are. They may give you a word that, that gives it a different type of twist, gives it a different type of um, um, understanding or a, a different type of ability to connect with what it is you're trying to do to, to make sure your business impacts the people that you want to you want to impact. And, and let me stop right there and say it's really important. The words that you put on these paper and, and think about um, an acronym that I have. And it's simply IBI. IBI. Impact. I mean, intent, behavior, impact. Intent, behavior, impact. What is the what is my intent in putting this? document together, which is going to help drive my, be, my behavior to how I formulate it so that it will then be able to receive, be received or impact a person in a certain way. You can use that with a business plan. You can use that just interacting with people. But my what's going to be my intent, which will help drive my behavior so that it impacts the people or peoples in a way that is beneficial to the message that you're trying to deliver. So mission statement and vision. That's 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 one. And then you want to have um, products and services. What are the products and services provided? So you say, well, you just talked about it on the executive summary, Rich. Why are you reasoning? Well, the executive summary was a summary, right? Executive summary was a summary. The business overview, I'm putting everything here on one page, right? But that doesn't mean this. all this information has to be on one page. 
this business overview can be a three or four, uh, three or four page document within your plan. So uh, what products and services are provided, right? What is it that I'm, what is it that I'm offering? Is it one dimensional, multi dimensional? If it's multi dimensional, you want to make sure you you kind of highlight what each of those products or services are. What is the benefit to the customer? I'm, I'm sorry, to the consumer. What is the benefit? Why do I want to buy what you are offering? Right. And be able to articulate that again. Words matter. And then how are these products and services provided? How am I going to get it to the market? We're going to talk about a couple ways to do that in a bit. But that is a, another thing we want to make sure we do. So again, it's not it's not too heavy. What products and services are provided? What's the benefits to the cust to the consumer? And how am I going to the market with these products and services? Okay. And then last but not least, in terms of the overview that we're talking about, in terms of the overview, you know, what's what's our one year outlook? Okay. And when you're looking at a one year outlook, you want to say, okay, what are my risk and opportunities clearly out outlined? What are the things that could go really, really, really good? And what are the things that that may disrupt what it is I'm trying to do, what it is we're trying to do in the marketplace? And then the three year outlook, you know, what is going to be part of your new business development? Is you, Are you just going to stay where you are or do you have a plan for a new business development? Do you have a plan to generate a potential investment in the event that you see a growth, um, but you might not have the funding for? So, what are the what are the things you're trying to do? And then, you know, what's your five year outlook and strategy and strategy execution? Um, everybody's not strategic. That's not a good thing or a bad thing. Some people are better at it than others. Some people have ideas, but they don't know how to put that idea in motion. Some people don't have ideas, but they know how to get them in motion. It's OK to surround yourself with the folks that are good at some of those things. You don't have to be able to do all those things yourself. Surround yourself with the people that that you can you can learn some of those things from or people that you know have been successful uh in doing it so i hope i hope that uh, the detail here i said these those so the, yes these are in detailed descriptions that that would be correct so this is your business overview so you've had your executive summary now you've done your business overview and now you're going to go um even deeper into what it is we're trying to provide and that is what is the market and competitive analysis? Market and competitive analysis, something that you need to know. Um, you know, if you've ever read the Sun Tzu, The Art of War, it tells you you need to know your enemy. If you don't know your enemy, then you, you probably never win, right? So from a market analysis standpoint, let's talk about market analysis first. What is the market, all right? What is the market? I okay, you know, I have this, I have this business that I'm that I'm working on, whether it's uh, cosmetics. Okay, well, okay, that's the market I'm in cosmetics. Well, how big is it? Well, what are we talking about? Are we talking about lotions? Are we talking about nail polish? Are we talking about facial cleaners? Are we talking about men? Are we talking about women? Are we talking about children? What is the market? How big is it? What are the trends within the market? Is it growing? Is it declining? You know, if, if I'm starting a business and I've been in businesses that we got in when the, when the business was going like that, that's not a great time to get in the business. Right. Um, but is the growing or declining? You want to kind of see where you are. Is, is it already a mature market or is it a brand new market? And if it's a mature market, that doesn't mean there's no place to to play in the market. But you really want to have a good understanding of what the current market conditions are and how and how they uh, could impact what it is you're trying to do. So in addition to the marketing trends, uh, is it a commodity or a specialized market? But why does that make a difference, Rich? Well, if it's a commodity market, listen to me now, if it's a commodity market, it's going to be very, very, very important that you have a very low cost position to get into that market. If it's a commodity market, it's going to be very important that you have a low cost position because the market value always falls to the lowest cost provider. Right. So if you're making it for twenty dollars. And I'm making it for ten dollars. Guess what? I have market advantage. Right. So you want to understand what is the is it a, is it a product that is really based on when you're in a commodity market, you really have to make sure you're looking at utilization, cost and volume. That's why you make your money. Utilization, cost and volume. 
if it's a specialized market where you're offering something that is either patentable or trademarkable or has some differentiation, it's all about price and keeping folks out of getting into it. Now, a lot of the businesses that that we'll be engaged with over the next couple months are kind of in the middle, right? They may be a service that, you know, whether it's real estate, whether it's fashion, whether it's um, whether it's um, IT, whether it's whether it's um, cosmetics. There's space for everybody to play, but you have to know where you want to play and be good at that space where you're playing in. And by knowing some of these things that we're talking about right here, it will help you uh, in terms of putting your best foot forward. Again, don't get overwhelmed by all this stuff. You don't have to have all of it. You don't have to have all of it to be successful, but you want to have a mindset of understanding these things. Is it an oversupply or undersupply market? Is there plenty of product? Because if there's plenty of product, you know, it's going to be, you're going to have to deal with pricing unless you're in a particular space. Is it undersupplied? Well, that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing because you can charge as much as you want, right? If it's something that we, people want, but there's not enough of, you know, basic rule of supply and demand, right? Basic rule of supply and demand. So um, somebody said it's a little blurry. Maya, are you seeing something blurry? I'm seeing it pretty clear here. Um, it's clear? Okay, cool. Thank you. So uh, competitive analysis, competitive analysis. You have to, after you do your market analysis, as we talked earlier, you want to do a competitive analysis. Are there many competitors or few? Just so you know what you're up against. And as I talked a little bit earlier in the market analysis, but this kind of gets into the competitor. Do they have a preferred position on cost? Is their location or logistics a big deal? That's not always a big deal. Why? See a CVS, what do you see? A Rite Aid. See a Wawa, what do you see? A Royal Farms or a um, or a uh, 7-Eleven, right? So there's enough room for a lot of different businesses to act. So don't let that scare you, but you just want to know. Um, do they have a patent protection? Uh, if it's a specialized product, do they have patent protection where you have to, you're not able to get around that patent? Um, how will the competition respond when you enter? If you're just entering the market, what's the competition going to do when you come in? Are they going to try to get you out? Or are they going to let you in, but they're going to con try to con continue to, to keep what they have or broaden themselves? You just kind of want to get a feel for all that. And then what weaknesses does the competition exhibit? You know, that's that's really important. What weaknesses do the competition exhibit? Because that could be an in and we're getting ready to go to that next. That could be an in for you. And if that's an in, you want to take full advantage of it. You know, all this fair and love worn business, as long as you're not cheating, doing any insider training or doing anything unethical. OK. <laughs> all right. So market analysis, competitive analysis. You see how we're walking through this thing. Executive summary, business overview. Right. Uh, market analysis, competitive analysis. And then we get to some stuff that's going to look heavy, but it's not heavy. It's going to look heavy, but it's not heavy. OK. And this is what we call a SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is simply. Simply, it's simple. It's simply what are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and, and threats. That's SWOT, SWOT analysis. You can do this on your own, even whether your business is small, whether your business is big. It's always good to have a SWOT analysis. Let's look at strengths. Strengths. What are your strengths? You know, what do you know you're good at? Or what do you know that you do better than others? Or what unique capabilities and resources do you possess? That would be a strength. And you want to, of course, exploit those strengths as you go into promoting your business. Right. What are your weaknesses? What do your competitors do better than you? What can you approve upon? Certainly, both of these things are, are, are things you should go into um, a business or if you have an established business, OK, and you're looking to do that, that next dimension shift into your business, you're here, you want to go here, not a step change, but a dimensional change. What are some of the strengths and what are some of the weaknesses that you can exploit? OK. What are your opportunities? You know, so internal strengths and weaknesses. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? OK, externally, what trends or conditions may positively impact you? We know that 
even in this pandemic, a lot of folks making money on these masks, PPE, masks, gloves, sanitizer, cleaning material, you know, all this stuff. So are there conditions that are about to come that you can see that say, wow, I need to get into that. I need to get in that. I'll pause right there and tell you, I was telling Bishop um, some, some time ago when I was in grad school, when we're talking about, wow, 25, 30 years ago, y'all, I had this class. It was called New Business Ventures and Entrepreneurship. And in this class, we had to do group, you know, we had to do group projects. And um, my group, I still have the paper to this day. My group did uh, um, um, a project on the home grocery shopper. The home grocery shopper. And our teacher said at the end of that class, we got an A. He said, out of all the projects, it was probably five or six in class. He said, y'all need to do this. We didn't do it. Missed opportunity. Who knows where we we well, I'm not even going there, but that was a missed opportunity. So when you think of something, you write it down, you got a vision, you make it plain, doesn't mean you don't act on it. Act on that thing. That was 30 years ago we thought about it. We home the groceries get delivered to our house. We don't go to the grocery store, they come. So, you know, that's just a little bit of encouragement. Just because you have something that may not have, you don't see the, the need for it at the time, doesn't mean it's not gonna be a need for it. So look at the 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 opportunities in terms of what are the trends or conditions that may positively impact you and what opportunities are available to you now. And look for those things. Make sure when you're doing this analysis, because it helps your thinking on how you're going to position your business, what opportunities are available to you. And then what trends and conditions may negatively impact you? Right. Certainly, this pandemic has negatively impacted a lot of things, particularly in the service industry. Uh, so if you have a service, you have to look at that. Say, how could something like a pandemic impact me? Right. Is your financial support solid? Right. How are the weaknesses that you identified above impact you? Those can all be threats to your business. Now, that is not the end all be all right. These strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. But we just want to provide you with the basis or foundation of what it is that you can you can look at when you're looking at this SWOT analysis. So you have a new word SWOT analysis. If you don't already know it, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So that is. You've done the market analysis, you've done the competitive analysis, you've now have done the SWOT analysis. You, you're starting to feel some fundamentals, I hope, on, wow, if I have all this stuff, then it's just a matter of going, right? Just a matter of, just a matter of going. Now, next, we're going to go to look at various marketing and sales options that are available to you. Various marketing and sales options available to you. We're going to go through each one of these. I'll, I'll, I'll move um, for the sake of time because we have we do have a special guest coming on in, 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 in a bit. Um, but we have various options open to us. Could be websites. How you advertise. Whether on your own or through various search engines, certainly when we do the the uh, the full blown panel discussion on uh, technology and social media, we'll get a lot of got to get a lot into that. Yeah, social media, which is social media optimization, social media marketing. So when I say social media optimization, how am I optimizing my use of social media to market my business and generate sales? Social media marketing. How am I marketing um, uh, my business just in general through the use of social media? Am I getting on other people's websites? Am I, you know, what am I doing? Um, and again, we have a, a panel of experts that'll that'll talk to you about that in a, in a, in a couple months. Media and PR, press releases, magazine, guest blog, blog, blog posts, another another vehicle that can, you can use. Certainly, we know that you know papers and magazines aren't as as prevalent as they used to be, but there still are people that that go to those magazines for for help. Email market, newsletters, campaigns. You know, do you put out a newsletter on your business that that has a way of attracting uh, a, a person or persons to your business? Campaigns that you that you're generating through different uh, media vehicles on, on email. I love word of mouth. I've always loved word of mouth. Customers, you got a product and, customers, and, the, and the customer loves it and they tell somebody else. Your employees, if you have employees in your business that believe in your business or the vendors that you're using to provide some materials for you, are they able to, to also help you generate 
you know, marketing and sales for your business. And then last but not least, events. Do you host events? Do you sponsor events? Do you volunteer nonprofits? And that gives you an opportunity to to um, to highlight your business. Right. All these are various options and opportunities for you to be marketing your goods and services. OK. I hope this is not too much. I'll pause and see. Um, I think we're doing OK. Oh, do you need a trademark, a name or a logo? Well, you should have a name, right? <laughs> you should have a name. You don't have to have a trademark and you should have a logo, right? Something that is yours. Um, so I would say yes to, to all, all uh, both of those. You don't have to have a trademark, though. don't have to. But if you don't and somebody else snatches it. So I well, let's leave that question for our legal folks when they come when they come next time. And so uh, management and operations, this is pretty this is pretty straightforward. This is pretty straightforward. A quick overview of the critical roles that make up your business. Again, these are all the fundamental pieces that you have in the body of your business plan. Business plan doesn't need to be 100 pages, 50 pages. It could be 10. It could be, I would suggest no more than 20, but it shouldn't really be 10 to 15 pages you should, unless you have multinational businesses going around the world, but otherwise you should be good. Short, a short, um, a short uh, background of who's the per who you are, your name, your background, education if desired doesn't have to be a short bio. So overview of how you came to be in this business and what your personal vision is for success. So people can see who you are and have a little bit of information about you. And then uh, the multi multi dimensional aspects of the business. You know, if you have um, uh, a larger corporation and you have people, you know, some businesses will just be you and you need to promote you. Some businesses will be Multi-dimensional. You'll be, there'll be, you maybe you're the president, and CEO, and you have a finance person or or operations person or marketing and sales, and you have total employees. Folks need to be able to see that that and what it is that you have um, that you have there. Okay. So again, this is just kind of saying how I run my business. Who are the important people, or as I say here, the critical roles that are associated with the business. Okay. Financials. We'll get a lot more into this when we do our financial, uh, when we talk about funding and financials, but just a couple of key things you need to know. Three key financial records, record keeping sheets in any business that you need to become familiar with. Income statement, revenues and expenses, pretty much an example of profit and loss. A balance sheet that shows what your assets are, what your liabilities are. Cash flow statement that you really don't need that, but it initially, um, but it's it's a it's a statement that provides uh, the aggregate data, the total data regarding all the cash that inflows to the company uh, that you receive from your ongoing operations or internal investments. So the, for the purpose of of um, example, let's take a look at what an income statement looks like. Income statement, a lot of numbers here. Don't, 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 don't get, don't let your head blow up now. It's not that heavy. Um, we just want to look at, like I said, income statement. What did I say? Revenue and expenses. What are my sales revenue, right? What are my sales revenue? What am I getting from a tangible item that I'm providing? What is my service revenue? Service revenue may be, okay, I provide you a product, but I have somebody come do it for you. That's service, right? I come, somebody does that that service for you with the product that, I'm, that we're providing. And some companies will just have one or the other. Interest revenue is if you have other investments and you get interest off of that. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. This is, this, is what I'm, this is the money that's coming into my business. And then expe expenses, you know, expenses, whether it's advertising, you know, you have to pay somebody commissions. A big one is cost of a good sold. How much does it cost to me to, to um, provide the product to my customers? You know, what is my interest expense? If I've had a loan, you know, what is the interest on that loan that I'm paying? You know, if I have people, what are the salaries and wages that are associated with that? Uh, so that is very, uh, those are some of the things. A lot of the stuff on here you may not have with regard to your business. Um, bad debt, for instance. Bad debt is when somebody owes you money, they don't pay you and you have to write it off. How many of us have ever been in a situation where somebody owes you money, and you have, and they never paid it off. So that's bad debt. So that's income statement. Again, it's not that heavy. Revenue and expenses. What's coming in and what's going out, and then down at the bottom, you get your net income 
from ongoing operations, right? So that's what you made. You had a, on this example, $180,000 in revenue, $142,000 in expenses. So you made $22,000, right? So that's, that's, um, that is in and of itself an income statement. Next, we have balance sheet. A balance sheet really is talking about, okay, income statement, revenue and expenses, balance sheet, assets, and liabilities. What I own, what I don't own. What I own, what I don't own, right? Um, so current assets, because there's cash, accounts receivable. That's money that's still going to be coming in. Inventory, that's the value of the product that I have uh, on the shelf or, or some expenses. You may have long term investments, uh, long term investments in, in, in things that are that is an asset to you. So it's not it's not um, liquid cash, but it is an investment and it, it should be it should be looked at as cash. You may have property. You may have a store. Right. You may have a vehicle that you use. That's an asset. It should go on this asset sheet. You may have um, um, equipment. Those are assets. So those make up those things that you own or are or, or part of your property. And then liability. What are those things you have to pay out? If you have an office, you got to pay utilities, right? You have to pay for cell phones or, or your car or your gas or things of that nature. So those are those are also liabilities and then long term liabilities. If you had to get a loan. To do something within the business, if you had to generate a loan, then then that also is something that we need to make sure we um, we put into the liabilities segment of our session. So balance sheet and income statement, pretty straightforward. Want to make sure that you understand the fundamental aspects of that and not 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 be scared about it because it's not that heavy. Um, and, and as things go on, it gets easier and easier to 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 do. Right. So um, let's see. So that is um, where we we what we got. We went through all that. Right. So we said we started with the executive summary. Why do I need a business plan? The executive summary, the business overview, right? Um, the 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 well, let's go back and see. Let's go back and see because I'm forgetting all the stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go home, uh, and then we'll go, before we go to our summary. So we've done the executive summary. We've done a company description. We've done the um, marketing competitive analysis, right? We've done the management and operations, who you are or what your company is made up of, one of the critical positions. We've looked at marketing and sales, how you can actually go to market um, within the business. And we looked at the financials. Um, and then that is, in fact, the foundation of your of your business. Right. And then the last thing you want to do, you want to say what you said. You want to say what you're going to say. Right. Then you want to. Then you want to summarize after you go through everything, you then want to summarize what it is that you said. So in the business plan. A business plan, excuse me, is a document that uh, highlights all of the relevant areas of your business can also be used when seeking outside investors or funding is a live document. This is not something that you just write, you put it away and you don't look at it again. You should review it at least annually, at least annually, if not, if not often and adjust it as you need to, you know, also serves as your strategic plan, which sets your outlook for the next three to five years. Remember, everyone, that the race is not given to the swift, right, or the strong, but those who endure, right, those who endure. It, it, none of us came out of our mother's womb grown. So no business just has grown like that. You got to put the work in. Bishop always talks to us about process and we want to make sure that we 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 understand that we have to go through the process. So we have another question here and it says, after you review the financials, can you provide your opinion on which is better, an LSC, a sole proprietorship or working towards a corporation? Well, the corporation um, well, limited LLC, limited liability corporation, sole proprietorship. So proprietorship is I own a business. Nobody else owns a business. The thing that is great about an LLC, which are which are um, our legal, our legal um, team will. Um, our legal team will accept. Will will help you work through is that an LLC 
No, sole proprietorship can open you up to being liable yourself. Where LLC protects you such that if happen happens to my business and the business gets sued, they're not gonna take my house. Right? They're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, I still won't have a place to live because the business is is protect, it's not protected. Well, it is protected, but it takes it's it's a limited liability corporation. So there's limited liability on the corporation and not on me, right? So I hope that um 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 clear to that the question. Thank you for asking that question. Um, the executive summary is often written last because it summarizes the entire plan. That is exactly right. And that's what I tried to say earlier. Um, and that's okay. Um, our guest is having trouble calling in, but that's okay. If we don't get him, we'll get him next time. That's all right, because we have we have some questions that can that can go here. So again, we wanted to make sure we provided you with some fundamentals to putting a business plan together. Um, and it's not that heavy. Um, it's just something that is good for you to do to have a foundation on which to drive your business um, and, and a plan for you to work uh, through your business. Um, uh, so, again, that question, that's the sole proprietorship uh, does open you up to uh, uh, you know personal lawsuits and a limited liability a LLC does not do that. And a corporation is then even bigger than an LLC. Right. So. Um, if there are there any other questions we have here, uh, certainly we'd like to talk through them again. I would like to um, to make sure that you all know that uh, next month um, uh, we're looking to do the legal aspects of a business. So that last question will be a fundamental thing for that for us to talk through at that point. Um, in March, um, we're looking at finance and funding. That's finance and funding. Um, so we'll get a little bit deeper into finance, and 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 I expect that those those discussions will be a couple diff a couple more people. It just won't be somebody just sitting here, kind of presenting to you. But for the business plan, we wanted to found to provide you with a foundation of everything um, that we're looking looking at, and then technology and social media. I expect there's going to be a a, a lot of interaction uh, for that one, and we're really looking forward to it. Uh, one of the things we're also trying to do at the end of um, each of our in the last 10 or 15 minutes of our of our time is be able to um, highlight uh, a Bethany business um, that we have. Um, our, our guest for tonight is, is was having some problems with uh, connecting, um, but that's okay. Um, I look forward to, to having them uh, next time. But we, we wanna take the time because there's a lot of, there are very, there are many, many entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, um, started up entrepreneurs, you know, within the church. You know, there are a lot of things, a lot of learnings that can come from some of the experiences that people have had, that people continue to have um, with regard to their corporations. Wide variety, whether it's services, whether it's products, whether it's accounting, whether it's legal, whether it's, you know, medical, there's a lot of people that have a, a wealth of information that we're looking to bring you and show you and showcase, you know, certainly showcase for you in the upcoming weeks and months. And we hope that that this uh, vehicle will, will, will not only help you, um, but but you'll be able to see the fruits of some of the things that we're providing to you from a teaching standpoint, so that um, it gives you another vehicle. You know, how many people, you know, how many people have the opportunity to sit and learn about something simple as, you know, not simple, something as dynamic as putting together a business plan, legal aspects of running a business, finance and funding, social media and technology um, that, that would allow you to do something like that. Um, so um, we look forward to, to making sure that those things continue to grow. You know, the BPA, the Business Professionals Association, um, is something that uh, is true uh, to, to um, um, what is the foundation of everything that Bishop teaches us, you know, whether we're doing it um, in a corporation or whether doing it uh, in an entrepreneur venture, we're doing it all, all to the Lord, right? And we also know we don't work, we don't eat. So um, it's, it's important that, that, we, that we do do that. Uh, again, please make sure that you, uh, you share. Um, let us know, you know, send us, send us a note. I think Maya, what what if they want to send us a note about about um, this? Can they do it at social at go to, or do they have to do it somewhere else? I don't want to give out wrong information, but if there's something you'd like to see, um, please send us a note. 
and we'll we'll see how the schedule looks for the remainder of the year. If there's um if there's a question about something that that wasn't so much understood, we'll also like to um um provide that that information to you. And it is social at gotobethany.com for more content of what you'd like to see. Uh, so please please do that. Um, uh, just a couple of announcements for you for you all. Certainly certainly join us. Join us on on Saturday morning at nine o'clock where Bishop uh, Bishop Evans and, and Pastor Nick will be hosting uh, on point. I'd like to say the tagline, but I know I'll get something wrong. I just know that's the number one. I'm not going to do the rest because I'll get it wrong. Um, but but please join them. They always talk about uh, various topics uh, from a Christian standpoint that that have to do with everything that that's going on in the world right now. And there's a lot there's a lot going on. Um, join us again, of course, on Sunday at eight and eleven um, for service. And then we have a live talk around 9.45 or so. Uh, so join us for that. And, and a very special happy birthday to our, 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 our most beloved bishop, um, hardworking man, been with us for 30 years. And we would just like to, to have um, him uh, have a wonderful celebration. So please, please um, send a short, short video. They tell me five to 10 seconds or 15 seconds or something. Um, and and um, they'll try to get it up on they'll get it up on the site. Wishing him well wishes. Sir, we're all sewing into his life. He's a young sixty nine. So whether it's whether it's sixty nine dollars or or something more, whatever you can do, I know he'll appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate all that he's done for us and continues to do for, do for us. So thank you um, for all of your all of your uh, time this evening. We're gonna we're gonna give you three minutes back in your busy life. Um, but we're we're really happy that you took the time to join us. God bless you. God keep you. I'm Reverend Rich. The rest of the BPA family will be with you going forward. And we're looking forward to seeing you again. Take care.